Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here. We are still at Shards Coin and Bullion and we're going to be having a look at some fake coins. Now on this little tray of coins here we have some fakes and I'd like you guys to be able to guess which one you think is not necessarily the fake, because quite a few of them are, but which one is real? We have here an expert coin tester in Lawrence who is going to talk us through some of these fancy bits of kit that he's got out on the table to work out exactly which ones are not quite genuine. So over to you, Lawrence. Talk us through what you're going to do and how you're going to test some of these coins well, and bars. Well, me being pedantic, I'm going to say they're all real. Okay. But, um, but they're all actually fake. Well, there you go. The real in that they exist. Yes. Uh, but one is actually got a good metal content compared with the rest. Okay. And, um, and the rest are either um, base metal or um, whatever. Actually, we've got a sophisticated bit of testing kit here. We have. It's which is a, oh. a near diamond magnet. Okay, yes, oh. I'm seeing it. Let, let go on there. Let me have a go. Yeah, we use it the paper too. Oh, it's quite good. Yeah, no, I've got a few of those. Not that shape, but I've got a few of those at home. Yeah, they're handy to have because they, they are a good instant check for, for yeah. something there, like that. There you go. That's obviously got some iron in it or there are other or some kind of magnetic yeah. things but uh, that will have iron in it. Um, is that a fake Churchill? So there we go, got another, another hit on the magnet. So a magnet's a really good starting point. Magnet's pretty good, they're cheap, you can buy these for a few pounds, yep. no order, and uh, it's very good for detecting some things that might just fool you yeah. If you weren't quick enough, and it's worth having, worth having one of those in totally everybody's agree. little toolkit. And it's also very good for keeping bits of paper on your night on testing machine. Indeed. Now, we've gone from one extreme to the other, haven't we, here? Cause, uh, so you've got yeah. a couple of pounds in that magnet. Do you want to tell all the wonderful people quite... You don't have to give an exact number, but an approximation of how much one of these machines costs. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think we paid £13,500 plus that for this. So about £16,000. Big old chunk of money. Uh, but there are some things that you should know, and there's about three bits in there that are actually consumer parts. So it's like buying a projector. Right. Um, when you buy a £1,000 projector and the lamp goes, it costs you 500 quid. And there's three parts in there that are thousands of pounds each when they go, and they're right. consumable. Okay. And also, we have this serviced about once a year, and it's a couple of thousand pounds a year for servicing. So it's not your everyday stacker piece of equipment? No. It's very much, you need to have the volume to justify it. Yeah, worth having if you're serious. Yep. But, um, and we probably should have a spare one as well. But we were, actually, we were talking earlier that about the Sigma Metalytics and as a sort of stop gap, which yeah, are and I, interesting. What, what yeah, were your thoughts on those, quickly? I said, yeah, we should get a Sigma, actually. Then we can tell people what they like and what we don't yeah. think they're very good at. Okay. I actually don't think they're going to be very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always said for them, I think that they're really good at indicating, like the magnet, if immediately there's a problem that you should investigate further. Yeah, exactly right. But what none of that stuff will do is guarantee things are genuine. No. So Which is one of the one of the curiosities that we're going to look at here today uh, on some of these coins, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Do you want to show us how the machine works then? So, well, yeah, we'll, we'll show you with something. Um, are we ready to, to reveal which one's which here? Has everybody had their guess? Well, everyone take a moment now. You can pause the video if you want and have a quick look at which you think. So, phrase it right, because I said it wrong. One of these is the correct oh. metal content, but a fake They're coin. They're all real, but one's got a, a real um, metal content. Okay, so have a guess, guys, which you think we are referring to. We've already eliminated two because uh, magnetic. Yeah. Uh, Although it would be so good to see. So if we, if we maybe, you will test the one that you are going to reveal, I'm sure. But yep. maybe, we'll, shall we start with the two that failed the magnet test so we can actually uh, see what's uh, in them? Yeah, we've got to get them out of the capsules now. Really. Ah, so you have to take them out of the capsules <laughs> to oh, go in well, there. Oh, well, we have to uh, log into this and go uh, to see. We should have worn this up. We'll let you know our secret password. Ah. It's, it's, no, that's all. It's our top secret oh, password. Here we go. One, two, three. F oh, rubbish. Got it wrong. One, two, three, four. Have we got that right? Uh, yes. There, there we, we go. go. Top secret password, it's guys. It's exactly the same that we use on the combination for the, the strong room, of course. Of course. Just to fool people. And there we go. Uh, 
ready to test. Can we get this out of the capsule? No, yeah. see, I have, oh, the, I have the same bit. problems. <laughs> yeah. When you're on camera, Lawrence, things start to get more urgent and you have you to are. get the capsule done. Oh, yes, that's, so uh, that's very magnetic. Iron, but we'll it? see how much iron, or what, if there is any silver. Let's do the clean side. Okay. Uh, when I say that, I mean without the, uh, the cooling on it. Um, <coughs> go stop, start. Let's see what's going to happen. Um, we've got an instant uh, display of some things there. Yeah. Gold not present. Gold That's not good present. Clue. And there's your uh, decimal or millesimal readout. Indeed. And, all that. and here is uh, our thumb, the first four metals it's finding. So there's not even any silver plated content there, or is it just so little that it wouldn't register? Probably so little it's not going to register. Wow. We've got copper 78.6%, yep. plus or minus 0.2%. Yep. For error. Iron, well, we know about the iron. Yep. We've got nickel, we've got cobalt. And I think a lot, if you went into a jeweler that has one of these, it probably mm -hmm. only has that set to test for about 10, 10 or 20 seconds. Yep. Uh, we have our set for 60 seconds. Yep. Uh, because uh, you, it's going to iron out some of these inaccuracies the longer you test yes, it. Yes, I can see the numbers changing as it, yeah, as it goes through. And I want to know quite exactly. We could put it on for five minutes or something yeah. like that, but it's not going to make much difference. And up to 60 okay. seconds there. there you what go. we can do if we're smart is if we press that, we actually get the readings to four Ah, places. so we can see there, AG. Yeah. So we can see uh, that there is a little oh, bit yeah, of silver yeah, content. So there you go, 0.3 of a percent. And that's probably just plating yes. so its surface. Very uh, good. So not very much there. So show me now the coin, the magic well, coin that we've this, we right. talked about that spurred this idea for this video. Because well, we, this was a new coin that came in recently, wasn't it? It was. I saw, we bought this I think a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. I only saw this yesterday because I've been off. Um, and well, actually, it's an easy one to tell because if you have a look, mm -hmm. this sovereign is yellow. Indeed. So it can't be a Royal Mint product, can it? <laughs> It'd be copper coloured. I know, the rose mint. gold sovereigns are not the most pleasant look. I'm being a bit cruel there, but um, we'll put this on. Okay. Uh, the first thing is, I don't use this machine yeah. to tell me something fake, yeah. primarily. Okay. I use my eyes and my brain. Yeah. Uh, they coordinate quite well, they've had a bit of experience. Well, I'm going to pan back and we're going to show Lawrence now in all of his glory. Well, yep. here, there, here he is, and he's going to do his monocle test on the. So, yeah. This I, this comes though from many years of experience, I think, yeah. isn't it, Lawrence? As I used to tell people when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, years of experience. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I saw this in a plastic bag yep. yesterday, in with a bunch of I think forty-two sovereigns in a pack that we bought it. We bought them, and this one slipped by. Mm -hmm. We also do a, a second check because if we buy a fake. It's not the end of the world. No. If we sell a fake, it could be yes. the end of our reputation, and that is really so annoying if yeah. we, that comes in slip out. So I looked at this, and it looks long. Um, yeah. the, the reverse looks weak. Uh, we showed it you, and you went, oh, yeah. I think that's a fake. Well, I, it was, so it was an interesting one. I, I, let me, if I just grab it yeah. from you, and I'll show it very closely to the camera. So I looked at this and I thought it was, it, there was something just a bit off with it. It didn't have quite the feel of a regular sovereign and it felt a little bit thinner and had a little bit sort of wonkiness around the rim. So that was my initial thoughts. So maybe I'm starting to get a bit of experience and even like you, your Lawrence. Sofa looked at it and said, oh, that, that's Indeed. Light. I think that's too light. For those that don't know, I brought a good friend of mine along for the ride for today, but even he thought it was a bit off. Yeah. Uh, the weight's quite good. It's actually about 0.1 of a gram light, yeah. which probably would be right if it had got some wear and tear. Yeah. Uh, so it's within range. Um, it's a really, really obvious fake. It's, I could probably, when I was 16, I could probably detect that from about um, 10 feet away or more. Uh, now I need to... And now that you're 29, closer. you've yeah. got even more years' experience. Uh, well, one thing I've always used is an eyeglass. Okay. You only need a, a day up to two. You don't need a really strong thing uh, because it lets you focus closely. And when you have a look, it just looks awful. Um, this looks a bit as if I'd spent five minutes painting a copy of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it is so obvious that, uh, that a blind... In fact, a blind person probably could tell because they think, oh, it doesn't feel right. And 
Yeah, it probably smells alright. Um, well, so possibly doesn't taste. Good. But maybe it does or doesn't because now we're going to put it on the machine. We and are. this was one of yes. the most interesting things. So, because you think a fake sovereign? Yeah. Well, it's not going to be gold, is it? Um, I don't think that. But there's certainly one thing. Once you, when you do test something and you find that if the content's wrong and mm -hmm. it's fake, if the content's correct, then it might be fake or it might be genuine. Yeah. So you've you've eliminated things a little Indeed. bit. So we're going to put it on now and see. Yeah. And I always test the obverse first, just out of, of habit. Yep. Um, so we stick that over, over the uh, the sensor. We press the start button. Um, oh, we have to close that. So we don't use this bit very often. Start, stop. Off we go. Let's have a look. Uh -huh. It's on a go flow today. There we go. There it's we started. Go. So already we get gold plate not detected. It yep. should say gold plating not detected. But there you go. And this is the kind of idiot guide, but it's fairly close to 22 carat, which is probably what most jewelers use. Yep. I actually look at the molecular, molecular figures here. The gold's halfway now 9 1 something at the minute. Uh, we're into 20 odd seconds. So it, uh, there was another interesting thing you told me um, that I didn't know was oh. that sovereigns only had four parts per thousand silver. Uh, the four parts not definitive. Not uh, definitive. That's a kind of mode figure because after thousands I've tested, uh, the commonest reading that I get is four parts per thousand of silver. Okay. Because uh, this one has more. This has uh, yeah. 20 odd, 21 yeah, parts. That's, that's far too high. So that's um, another indication that there's yeah. something quite wrong. If that were a Perth Mint sovereign or um, an Australian sovereign from the 1850s, that silver content wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Um, but uh, this is, uh, well, it purports to be a 1916 Melbourne Mint, which is a slightly scarce date. We're coming out 9.11. I tested this yesterday and it's yep. coming out 916. Mm -hmm. If you add in the three parts tolerance, that's more, that could be as high as 919. Mm -hmm. That could be okay. Yeah. 911, yeah, that's a little bit low. You do get some variation. It might be temperature of the machine. Yeah. I might have put some grease yeah. on the coin. Yeah, there are other factors at play. Um, you pay 16,000, you can't expect protection, can you? <laughs> no, you certainly that. can't. But I think it's really interesting that even though it's made of gold, mm -hmm. uh, it could. F I think it could fool people, but even myself and a less trained eye saw that something wasn't quite right with it. Yeah. So I think experience speaks volumes. So we can have thousands of pounds of fancy machines, mm. but you can't put a value on your own experience and eye, can you? You're talking about as well, or have some experience with it. Um, and one question that came up a few minutes ago was that why would you make a fake sovereign and make the make it have a good gold content and actually too much silver? Mm -hmm. um, if you go back to when that was made, which why it might be 1950s, 1970s, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere around there, um, gold sovereigns had a market value in excess of the intrinsic. They had quite a high market value. In fact, yeah. I can remember working out way back in perhaps the 1960s, sovereigns were going for probably about a 40 or 42 percent premium. Okay, well, so, a big, big premium compared to today. Yeah, you, so you'd be stupid making like a low count gold yeah. and getting them detected yeah. uh, just because you'd been a cheapskate. Yeah, fascinating. Um, so Amazing. That's, that's one reason to put them into the bullion market. And here we go. So that one's come up with zero one nine one seven parts per thousand. That virtually spot on. That. Yeah. Uh, plus or minus three parts. Again, the silver content pretty consistent there. Um, twenty one parts per thousand. Uh, that's too high. Uh, we'd normally expect it to be four or five, I think. But right, it's Melbourne, so that's Australian. Australian gold probably um, wasn't, they didn't refine all the silver out. Sure. Uh, because the cost of refining the silver out would exceed the value you'd get from yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you've got 22 carat gold, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but some people would, some perhaps jewellers or non-experts would test that and go, the gold content's all right, yeah. that must be genuine. And exactly. of course that's a, that's a bear pit and a tap to fall into. It's Fascinating no stuff. And as you say, the, re the reputation side of things is the most important thing. And for you, having bought that from a customer and it's slipped through that initial 
round yeah um it's not the end of the world for yeah. any business no, but as you say right. selling it on as a fake is not a good idea yeah. this is down for a photo because we try and photograph just about every fake coin that we get in yeah just as a historical record yeah well you uh, showed me a giant box you've got down in your strong room uh, of all the fakes yeah um any non-precious metal fakes like that tend to end up in a black museum somewhere mm -hmm. these are out on public display so people can see some example of them um, precious metal ones like this if we kept every fake sovereign we'd ever seen mm -hmm. uh, we'd have um, we'd have no money left for uh, <laughs> current stock so what would happen to what's going to happen to that coin then do you um, reckon in a week or so that will get melted meanwhile uh, Monday that will get photographed hopefully uh, Monday Tuesday it will get shown down to our customer service team uh, the, the girl that Brought it in and already seen it and gone, oh dear, oh. Uh -oh. must try harder. Um, but it's all a learning experience, I think, isn't it? It's, uh, it's one of those yeah, things. Yeah, um, when you stop learning, it's about the end of the world, really. Indeed. Amazing. That's been really insightful and a massive thank you for taking some time to show us You're your welcome. fancy bits of kit. We and haven't done one of the ultimate tests, a gold bar. Oh, goodness me. This is like the chocolate Can gold bar, isn't it? No, you've given it away there. Well, we, we talked about it in the interview. Go on then, let's put the chocolate gold bar in and see uh, what it comes out well, as. Well, quite often we've got a bag of gold coins in the place. That's how. Chocolate gold coins. Well, you've got certainly lots of bags of gold coins uh, around. When we get customers in with kids, uh, one bit of fun I have is to pull um, a chocolate coin out. And, um, and there's a family there with 2.4 kids and mum and dad. And you go, OK, sh what's this coin made of? And one of the kids usually says, chocolate! And the parents go, no, don't be stupid, it's made of gold. <laughs> and we then point out that the kid was right and the adult was wrong. Um, so here's a chocolate gold coin, what's in it? Copper. Copper, mm, yeah. Well, too bad. Cadmium. Ooh, we don't want cadmium, do we? There's some metals coming up here which I'm less convinced are great to wrap your chocolate in, if I'm being honest. Well, you don't want cadmium in it, do no. you? No. You wouldn't want to melt that, would you? What happens Pro with cadmium? I have no idea, Lawrence. If you get cadmium in a silver melt and you get fumes off it, it's carcinogenic. Well, there you go. Ooh, no, I thought you didn't know that. I like I that it's get... saying 0 0.1 carat gold. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, that. Yeah, that's filling it. Zinc, and then palladium. Yes. No, no palladium that can't, is quite expensive. That can't be right. 92 parts per thousand palladium in there. So if you work that out, that's probably worth about 50 or 100 pound, that, um, that chocolate so gold bar. That, how is that happening? That can't be right. Uh, basically, the machine is not calibrated to test chocolate, other things than the commonest metallic elements. There you go. Um, so it, it's tuned to look for gold, silver, copper, things like gold plating. It says yes. gold plate probable. Yeah. Doesn't say it's certain. No. Because it notices something not quite right there. Indeed. Uh, if we press that, we might even get more. Detail. Oh, let me, what have we got in there? Um, rhodium. Got some rhodium. Ooh, that's expensive. That's expensive stuff. Iron, indium, and tin. Fascinating. So, well, there we go. Uh, um, but this may be a bit of fun, it may sound silly and flippant, um, but it's a good reminder that, um, that you pay £16,000 for a piece of equipment and it won't absolutely tell you everything you need yes. to know you have to still use your brain as well yes well so i think that's probably the best message to come out of this it's a combination of tests magnet gives you an indication immediately follow up with other tests if you need to but then rely on your experience to really bring the whole picture together i think yep. which is great what it doesn't tell you is what percentage cocoa solid is <laughs> there. You no. have to read the label and test it. Indeed. And, and on that note, Lawrence, I think we need to, uh, to end this video as we have gone on for 20 minutes. It's fascinating. Brilliant. But my camera battery is about to go. Okay. So thank you, Lawrence, for your time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Lots of very cool experiences here. And if you go into the Shards Coin and Bullion shop front, you might one day see that. Although I think right now it's still by appointment only. So don't just walk in and annoy them from my behalf. But one day you might see that tray of fakes. Thank you, Lawrence. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. Otherwise, see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.